So that kind of tells you guys when you ask, hey, is 10 sets good enough? It's probably more than enough. Oh, reverse grip mentions best move for arm wrestling. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I would 100% agree with that. All right. So we did, uh, we went to an, a different gym. Um, one of the gyms we love is uh, Dave Fisher Powerhouse Gym. And I got to be honest, the equipment for hamstrings tenfold. And it got me to thinking about one big thing. And that is um, most people, I think, on leg day does the basic squat, leg press, leg extension, leg curls, calves done with their workout. It's a good workout. It's a basic workout. It's an old school workout. It's a more of a power lifter workout. Um, and sometimes they'll just bypass the leg extension. That being said, I have discovered through uh, the years of judging and um, being in the health and fitness world, the hamstrings are so much more important for two reasons. One is that's where the real athletic ability comes from, the glutes and hams relative to the quads and then also for life and longevity you're going to want to keep a solid rear end and hamstring strength as you age um, that's going to keep the knees healthy healthy on the back side coming forward so that's just something i wanted you guys to uh, pick up on um okay how do you feel about the plaques method where it's one or two sets to failure with a long rest for the muscle group no, that's not how he trained. That's not how you train, guys. Yeah, that's not how you, I trained with Plaz. What are you talking about? That's what you see. That's what you saw on something. Are you excited for the Arnold documentary coming on Netflix? I am very excited. Uh, we had a kind of a, a little bit of pre-notice that we this did. was going to happen. We did have a little money. Um, uh, back to the question before, though. Uh, yeah, question. it's interesting that you guys... I don't know where you guys get that information. No, yeah. Question. Yeah, we would um, we'd work up to sets and then we'd go back and forth, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, there was a time we did ten sets of twenty on squats. Um, so yeah, I do like the idea that he said uh, long rest. Yeah. It, it, um, I think it was longer. Definitely, it was longer than what people do today because i noticed that people today feel like if they wait 30 seconds they're so impatient and they get right back in there and when there's just a couple couple people with me i notice that i do that as well sometimes and i'm like all right chill chill chill, chill out wait until i'm recovered and then get back in and do a set so that was uh one of the questions and for you guys at home that just heard that that was about tom plaz and how we trained together and his methods at that time hey mike i'm a college student thinking thinking about getting into working out and get a better life but i can't get time for the gym can you suggest some exercises or workouts that i can personally do i'm five nine and i weigh 70 kilograms nope that's, that's how you teleprompter it Sorry, can't, I can't, can't can't help you out. Can't help you. You got to make time for the gym. Got to make time. Yeah. Here, here's the here's the fun thing. Here's the real fun thing about this. I went to college. I went to high school. I went to junior high school. <laughs> so the whole idea that you're going to college and you don't find time is, I went to college and worked and still found time. So that doesn't make sense to me. Um, oh, stop chasing the booty. Huh? Yeah, I'd give up on sleep and, and do the training. That's one thing I, I, I know that everybody's going to cry about this. Everybody's going to say, oh, you got to get your sleep. I, I gave up a lot of sleep when I was young um, to get those workouts in. And you guys all know this. If you followed me for any amount of time, you know that um, – the main thing for me was the workouts and four o'clock in the morning. So I can then work through the day and go to the castings and do the personal training and whatever that was when I was 19, 20, 21. So it was that early, early morning training that I still, still would do and get in there. Oh, we got to do some cameos guys. We got to do some cameos. 
I'm running out of time. They got some uh, requests on these cameos. Um, you can always find time for something that's important. And the reason I wouldn't give you anything is because if I give you anything, it's irrelevant. You're just doing half-ass stuff. And now you're just wasting time doing a half-ass workout that's not going to help you. And it's wasting even more of your time when you should be studying, going to school, get a job. Uh, or going to really work out. Sorry. Next. Uh, it was too high quality. That's why he thought it was a video. Oh, no, that it's is. Too high quality. I argued these points about that uh, the fancy cameras are a little too long to uh, get and do and move. And uh, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. Uh, I, I appreciate this. I look yeah. better than, yeah. Solid. Reverse grip bench is the best movie for arm wrestling. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I would 100% agree with that. The uh, uh, That's going to make you so strong. Those elbows and stuff, yeah, tremendous. Right? I can't seem to recover from more than 10 sets per week for body parts. Is that enough to build muscle long term? Well, it, it depends on you and what you recover from and what you can train. So it doesn't matter on somebody else's. Um, I there was, my best arm growth was off of nine sets per week. So that's, you. That's, you. that's what worked for me. And I just watched a very, I mean, almost too. The linguistics was too deep and too depth for me. Um, but a great study and, and discussion from Mike Menzer talking about. The amount of time between training, between sets, between workouts, and about recovery. And it was it was beautifully said. And, and I'll get this guys for you guys or, or, or dissect it for you. Translate it for you, I guess would be the better term. But he talked about how uh, you don't grow in the gym. We know that. We know the gym is where you tear down the muscle, right? And then you go home and you start feeding it. You start recovering. Well, you dug yourself a hole, and I loved his analogy because you basically go to the gym and you break yourself and you tear the muscles, and now it's down. And now you got to fill that hole back up. And so there's a couple of days there that you're just feeding it to try to get it to recover. And within a couple of days, you basically just filled the hole. You haven't built on top of it. And that's why that concept that he talks about is that that's why one body part a week you know, you, you train arms Monday, you probably won't train them again. Now, he went a little further than I would. I would say by the following Monday, you should be good to go again. But he talked about from seven days to 21 days a body part. Um, and so you could understand what he was saying, how much he tore down his body and the people he worked with to the point of recovery, which is so cool to hear from somebody that I knew that I was around in the 90s. Um, so that kind of tells you guys when you ask, Hey, is 10 sets good enough? It's probably more than enough. And for all you guys that are sitting here going, I'm a savage. I train legs three times a week. I hope that kind of dawns on you that that's probably not the smartest thing in the world. So, and again, I think most of you think that it, you're the badass if you do a body part two, three times a week. Right now we're doing a body chart twice a week, but that's because we're slicing down and we're only doing it for 10 weeks. Uh, is that too deep? No. Was that? No? No, this is a good one right here. Ooh, Jeff 